So it has been almost 18 months since I last spoke to you, the time of the Visual Snow Conference. And we've been particularly busy um, in terms of research in the visual snow space. Um, in the early days, our focus was very much on recruiting participants with Visual Snow to the research. Everything we do is experimental and requires face-to-face -face or hands-on um, sort of experimentation. We've done that a number of ways um, through public lectures, through appearances on television. But one of the most important, important um, drives was a talkback radio show that um, Dr White and I actually engaged in. As I said earlier on in the piece, so we're about a half an hour to three quarters of an hour just chatting about visual snow. We were fortunate enough to have a, um, a young woman who had visual snow with us and the phones erupted. You know, it was a meltdown at the um, radio station and predominantly people ringing in said they'd never heard of this. They have the symptoms, um, expressing interest in being involved in the research or knowing more about it. So it was a fabulous outcome for us. And I think I spent the first six months fielding phone calls and emails and questions from people who thought that they might have visual snow. And what that's done is generate this enormous database within Australia and particularly within Melbourne of patient participants rather that are willing to help us with our research. And to date, over the period of 18 months, we've actually tested more than 100 people who, who qualify, or sorry, meet the criteria for having visual snow syndrome, which is amazing. The research itself is, um, is now involving you know, several members of our team, four PhD students, but other senior um, investigators as well. Um, most of that's been extending the sorts of work that I was talking about at the Visual Snow Conference, so it's characterising behavioural changes in people with visual snow. As I said at the conference, you can't measure something, as you can't fix something you can't see or measure. And so that's what we've been developing. We're creating a, a range of paradigms that let us tease out what's actually going on and allowing us to measure what's going on in people with visual snow. We're about to start um, publishing that research, so watch this space, it won't be long before that information comes to all of you. And from that, those initial, um, the initial stage research where we're characterising a behavioural profile in visual snow, we're actually now in the middle of our, um, a suite of MRI studies, um, so imaging studies, looking at, now we know what we're measuring, we can actually trace, trace that backwards and, and work out what it is that's driving those changes in the first place. That's pretty early days, we don't have a great deal of that analysed at the moment, that'll be the next set of studies that you'll, you'll see hopefully, hopefully within the next year or so coming through. And most recently we've been setting up a suite of EEG studies. Once again, looking at those behavioural changes and trying to find out what is driving those, rather than the visual snow, which you can't see or measure, it is a very subjective um, experience. But now we have those behavioural measures that are a signature of visual snow, we can explore those in both an EEG and a, uh, an imaging environment. And so that's what we've been doing.